Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's projects are, we've got a couple of pairs of Alden Indie boots. Now, these are my other favorite shoes next to the floor shimes. Um, right here, we've got a pair of, let's see. I keep getting the numbers confused. These are 405 Chrome XL leather, it looks like. Chrome XL leather is basically oil tan leather. You kind of squeeze that, you can see it gets lighter. Now this particular pair, this was done previous repair and the customer was not happy at all. So basically what we're gonna do, we're going to remove everything. We're gonna put new welts. We're gonna put leather soles and commando soles back on and clean condition the uppers. Now these on the other hand, I was so thrilled when I got these. Why you may ask? Because these look identical to my pair which are these. Yes, very similar, aren't they? Look at that. Well, mine are in a little better shape. Well, structurally, they're in a little better shape, not visually. This particular one has seen its better days. See the welt coming loose right there? I mean, the guy wears these, right? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to wear these boots. There's a lot of people who baby them, which is okay, that's fine. But these are meant to be working boots. This is what it's supposed to look like when you wear them, when you wear the hell out of them. So this particular one also, we're going to re-welt it. We're going to put a new leather midsole. We're going to do a 430 Vibram soles, clean conditioning uppers, and, and a matching heel. We're going to replace this Thomas heel. See that curve right there? We're gonna replace that with uh, the matching heel to the sole. Now, mine has been resold three times, okay? Most of the most of these Indies right here have a 270 degree welt, which means that it starts from where the heel ankle is, ankle bone, goes to the toe, comes back to the other side. What I did with mine, I put a 360 welt on mine. I think it gives it a little bit of a more, little wider heel base, more kind of surface to step on and and get a good balance on there now this particular pair it's got slits in the tongue okay i don't think this is original to the boot i think they somebody cut those in there what happens with these boots is that the tongues always go to the left or right okay it's very difficult to keep them in centered like that what i've done with mine is that I've stitched one side of the tongue. Some manufacturers do that. That way, it, stitch, it stays in the middle when you lace it up. You don't you don't stitch it on both sides because then your foot won't go into it. Just one side on the inside of the boot right there. When we say on the inside, this is the inside of the boot. That's where uh, that's where it gets stitched, so it stays in the middle when you wear it. All right, very cool boots. I I I love these boots. As you can see from my from my boots that I've had for about eight years now. I think I've resold them three times. They need a little bit of a good conditioning. I I normally, you know, clean and condition them up. I don't really make them look um, better visually as much as structurally because I want them to last a long time. I don't really care necessarily how, how good they look because they're on my feet all day and um, I get many, you know, many hours of wear out of them. And um, I think um, when you do take care of your boots, don't let them get this bad, obviously. Okay. <clears throat> I'm in a business and I do that. But most people who wear these boots will tend to take care of them. Similar to this, which is good. I think uh, I think the more you take care of them, the more they'll last you. Okay. Let's get started. Let me show you guys what Alden does. It's pretty cool. So most manufacturers will have... A gemming right and then the welt comes onto the edge and it's stitched together like that the gemming the uppers and the welt Alden has another another layer right here which is let me take a look for you it's another layer of canvas okay just like that, where it bridges the two sides together, okay? 
What happens with these gemming, sometimes, not all the time, after a while of hard use, the gemming comes loose with the footbed, from the footbed. Footbed is what you're stepping on. And if the gemming comes loose, this opens up and all of a sudden the uppers are a different size now. They've lost the shape. When this is here, stitched together, this material doesn't allow that to happen even if this gemming comes loose. So this is a good idea. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a new piece on there. We're going to stitch all new gemming, to, all new uh, weld together. So after it gets done, it's structurally sound also. All right, let's continue. This is just canvas. That's all it is. Similar to what was on there, just a different color. Color doesn't matter. As long as it's given structural support, it's all that matters. Uh, put some relief cuts here. one's apart also. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. We're going to clean this up a little bit first before we, we move ahead. All right, let's continue. Now, there are some things I don't like about the Alden, some of the Aldens, that, the way they make them, is that, first of all, on their heel blocks, now I've talked about this before, that it's, it's fiberboard. It's not leather. Now, there's, there's always a talk about, you know, why can't it be fiberboard, you know? Why does it have to be leather? This is fiberboard. It's, it's stacked paper, basically, right? It's, a, it's like a... What's the word I'm looking for? Compressed, I guess, maybe. Recycled. They grind it up and then they make this stuff out of it. But which lasts longer, you know? I don't think there's ever been a scientific study. Yeah, well, with the fiberboard, if it gets wet, yes, it will get... It will get, you know, damaged or destroyed, you know? But that, I don't like, I don't like that. I mean, you know, I would prefer leather. Same goes with the inner soles, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mid soles. The mid sole, this mid sole is paper also. And the heel rand. The heel rand is basically a piece of, um, piece of material on the, underneath the heel block. I'll show you in a second. Let me get these nails out of the way. That piece right there. When the welt is not all the way around, 360 welt, there's a heel rand on here, okay? Which kind of gives the design of the welt. This looks like it goes all the way around the back of the heel. That's made out of cardboard also. Sorry, fiberboard. Same thing. Not very good quality, unfortunately. Now, they do have an awesome shank. Okay. I like that about, about these boots. Other than that, structurally, they're pretty sound. So... 
wealth is given away there on the side. No big deal, that's going to be replaced. All right, let's continue. Got a little mark there. Well, it's not a mark, it's a chunk out of the leather. I'll see if I can fill that in a little bit, make it look a little better. All right, let's continue. Looky, looky here. All right, so it's shaping up. Got everything apart. Clean the uppers. I just used a little bit of damp water to wipe it down. Okay, let that dry. And then use a little bit of thinner to wipe it down. I haven't done much to it yet. I feel that little gash right there that we've had. We're we'll going to let that dry. We're going to sand that when it's dried. And we're going to fill that in a couple of times until we get a nice, even, even surface. So we're getting there slowly but surely. I've got my my watch on today now it is not a rolex people are like oh man such a nice rolex you got there you must be rich it was a gift from a customer and i'm proud to wear it um i guess it resembles a rolex but it is not it's it's kind of nice watch though i got he gave me two of them the other one has a red and an orange whatchamacallit bezel there is that what they call a bezel I don't know but i like my watch whether it's fake or real it doesn't matter it's my watch and i like it i'm gonna wear it yeah it's early quarter five quarter ten of five i started early this morning Alrighty then let's continue this is what i use Oh, that's the brown one. Never mind. <laughs> Sometimes it's too early in the morning to think. Just fill that in like that. And let it dry. Sometimes I get impatient and want to sand it but no you got to let it dry if you want it to work you got to let it dry there's plenty to do while that's drying all right let's continue all right this is what we call a split welt okay because it's split right here and comes up just like that that little leather piece that vertical piece goes against the uppers right there Okay, now there are lots of different welts. This is considered a flat welt. Okay. This is a storm welt, but a glue-on storm welt. You've got some shoes that are Okay, let's make a mess. Yes, more than usual. Let me grab the other one so you don't see the customer's name. This is basically a glued on welt. Okay, it's a glued on construction where that piece of leather right there is glued on, makes it look like it's like a Goodyear welt. This particular one, okay. See that hump right there, that, that round? That's what gives it, that's what's called a storm welt. And these are glued onto the shoes. If it was a Goodyear welted shoe, it would be same type, but it would be stitched on to the shoe. So this one, we're going to leave, we're going to leave the welt natural color. We're not going to pad, put any color onto it. That's what the customer wants. On the other one, we're going to dye it black. Same style. Everything's going to be the same, same style on the other pair, but the other pair is going to have a black welt instead of a light color welt. And um, this will have white stitches on the welt. That one will have black, obviously. Okay, let's continue. All right, we've got a welt on. Okay. Now, so many, even manufacturers with this boot, they have such an issue with, this is the heel rand, okay? 
and you've got to basically bring it in with the welt right here. This connection right here, there's always an issue with these, not always, a lot of issues with these at times that it's not very consistently, you know, it doesn't flow from the welt to the heel rand. I've overlapped it about an inch, okay? And once that comes together, once the soles come in, that's going to be a nice flow right there that you're not going to be able to tell that. There, well, you'll tell there's a seam there, but it'll be nice and smooth the transition between one to the other. So once we, um, once we got the cork in place, we'll put the shank, a heel rand, and then continue with our project. Well, let's continue. Now the heel ran will dictate how wide you can do your heels, okay? So you can't leave them too, you know, you can't leave them too big. This is just the fabric to cover the shank area. It's like an anti-squeaking. This isn't my hammer. Oh, this is another hammer I have. Just happened to grab it. It's the closest one to me. Here's my hammer. All right, so we're going to do here, we're going to kind of flatten down that seam between the welt and the heel rand. See, nice transition between those two. Once that sole comes on, it'll look very, very clean and neat. All right, let's continue. Beebing's black. And you got to remember that unfortunately these stitches are not going to remain white anymore because we've got to die over them. And we might be able to touch it up afterwards. We'll see. Might be able to do something with them. I like to do this now before I put the welt on because you can get into the nooks and crannies right underneath that welt area there. When you put the welt on, you're not going to be able to get in that, that deep. So it's a good idea to do all your dyeing at this stage. All right, let's continue. What time is it? Come on, what time is it? I mean, not the time time, but... What time is it? It's hammer time. So this is the house leather. This is called Black Forest Pit Tanned made in Germany, similar, similar to JR, but not, not the same, no. But for house leather, this is not a bad, um, it's not a bad material. Since we're going to put a mini lug sole on top, we didn't want to waste the money on the JR option because it's going to be covered. 
<clears throat> it's going to be covered like that. All right, let's continue. is on a light color welt there's no where to hide any flaws so it's got to be done right and you only have one chance chance to do it if you mess up then that's not a good nerve-wracking to, to stitch and not be able to see the other side. And we have a beautiful stitch. Oof, I can breathe now. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Now the other one didn't get a midsole because we did a house leather sole and it was getting the commando soles, which are the mini lugs. That's the reason. Almost forgot. That's the reason it didn't get midsoles. This one we're going to do the Vibram soles, so it's got to have a midsole. It doesn't have to, but it's a good idea to give it some base before we put that rubber sole on. All right, let's try this again. So this is the sole we're going to use for the black pair. Lightly just wipe that down with a little bit of thinner to remove the, the dirt and oil from my skin. What happens with these soles, with rubber period, sometimes it gets contaminated and it leaves little air pockets and um, eventually that air pocket will start coming loose. This is the Vibram 430 sole. It's a good sole. Now I was going to use the heel, the matching heel that comes with it. But unfortunately this was too small. So what I did was I put a leather heel bla base. I put a leather heel base. Leather heel base and the top left on top. And this is what it looks like. This is what it look like. Nice. Nice stitching on the welt. I love that. Brand new, fresh stitching. 
likes it. So we're almost done with this project. Once we nail the heel, we'll trim it. The uppers are pretty much almost done, just need to be conditioned again. So we're getting there, slowly but surely. What a nice transformation. All right, let's continue. All right, hammer time for the last time. Hammer time for the last time. Big foot, big wide foot. All right, welcome back. We are done with these projects. I think they turned out pretty good. score on the right by the side of the toe you still see it but it's much better than what it was I didn't want to sand it too much now these are solid boots now solid solid boots It'll last them for many years to come all right thank you for joining me I appreciate it oh by the way Mine got a little loving too. And these are mine also. And see, I have some nice boots. Just that this one is my, is my all time favorite. And, um, and normally I wear it 24 seven, but it's time that I need to come up with something where either I even thought about making new ones or just kind of changing the front vamp right here, but I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Oh, I've got on 
these are Alan Edmonds uh, olive suede. What, what the? I can't remember what style it was. Hold on. I know you guys are going to ask. Hamilton. Hamilton. Okay. This was uh, one of their trunk shows, I believe, that um, that I got these. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Make a comment. Positive, negative. Mainly on the positive side would be cool. If you guys have any questions, give me um, give me an email. Give me an email. Send me an email. Bedos, B-E-D-O-S, at yahoo.com. And we'll see you guys on the next project. Take care.